Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Law and Crime Network. I am Michael Bryant. This is the afternoon session. Paula Notari is here. Michael Kerbonix is here. We have one or two things to talk about today, folks. Uh, as you may have heard rumblings when Terry Austin was in this chair, the Weinstein jury has been uh, creating some interesting moments for the uh, press and the other court personnel because they have given the court some interesting messages. We have Brian Buckmeyer standing by live outside the courtroom. Brian, uh, uh, give, us a, give us the rundown. What the heck is going on down there? Yeah, Michael, so very exciting. We got a note, not saying that there was a decision, but they asked if they're hung on counts one and three, those are the predatory sexual assaults, as it applies to Mimi Hale, along with Annabelle Shore's testimony, and Jessica Mann, again, with Annabelle Shore's testimony. They asked if they were hung on those counts, but had a decision on the other three counts, could they go forward? Now, that created a huge buzz in the courtroom because it, it, it asked a lot of questions. What could those other two counts' decisions be, guilty or not guilty, and why are they hung or how far are they hung? So what happened, as it often occurs in the state of New York, the judge called the jury in and gave them what's called an Allen charge, told them they have to continue to deliberate. Now, as you recall, Donna Rotuna has to be out of here by 3 o'clock, and it's past 3 o'clock, so we're not sure if they're going to be done for the day or they'll continue to deliberate. Again, it's Friday, so you'd expect that we'd get a verdict sometime this afternoon, but I would not anticipate that. Now, after this came up, they asked, hey, can we be hung on this and convict on that? So they have to ask both the defense attorney and the prosecution as to whether or not they're going to go forward. Now, the defense happily said, we will happily take this and we will go forward with being hung on one and decisions on the other, while the prosecution wants to go forward. There are a lot of legal ramifications that come about that. I believe, Michael, the defense wants to get that verdict because either way, whether he's acquitted of those lower charges and they're hung on the other, there's a strong argument for the defense to say, if he's acquitted of the lesser included, he cannot, by matter of law and by matter of the instructions, be found guilty of the top charges of predatory sexual assault. If he's convicted of the lower charges, those that do not come with life in prison, and they're hung on the others, there's equally a strong argument for the defense. So the prosecution does not want to stop here. They want to continue to go forward. So, Brian, we're hearing now that uh, I know this 3 o'clock deadline, artificial or otherwise, was Donna Rotuno's personal need. Great. Understand it. But where you're, when you're at this point in the process and you've got five defense attorneys in the mix and nothing's going to happen like that, you're going to have time to get together all these attorneys before any sort of verdict is read. Uh, were you surprised that uh, th this plan to end court at three seemed to be uh, accepted by the court so quickly? Not surprised at all, actually, uh, Michael. When it comes to situations like this with personal matters, and I believe Donna Rotuno said that she has to go to a funeral, there are very few judges that I can think of in the state of New York, or in the city of New York, uh, as I do practice in Brooklyn, who would deny a, a lawyer that ability. Uh, we all understand that we represent people in, in major cases, but at the end of the day, we are people who have lives and families, and we have to be there for them as well. Okay, so Brian, we're hearing now that the jury has been dismissed for the day. They will be back on Monday where they will pick up the action here. And you mentioned something really important here strategically, procedurally, and that is this, this concept of a partial verdict. Um, I, I think personally that it's just better not to have one, but I can understand why the defense might want for the reasons you mentioned. What was the reaction when the court uh, ultimately decided, okay, we're not going to do that, we're, we're going to let the jury finish their job? Well, I think for, for the media that were here, uh, they were kind of shocked. They were thinking, how could this break down? How could you be hung on these, but, but decision on this? Could that mean there's, an, there's a, a conviction on the lower counts? Could there be an acquittal on the lower counts? They didn't hear from Jessica Mann. There was a lot of speculations. Uh, but from the lawyers and then from those who practice in New York, I think they kind of understood what would happen. You heard whispers of Allen charge, some people asking, what's an Allen charge? And that is simply just uh, informing the jury that when there's a deadlock, they have to continue deliberating. There's no set number of times you can tell a jury how many times they go back to deliberate in New York. Uh, it's kind of just, you do it as many times as needed, especially depending on the amount of charges, the amount of alleged victims, and how long the proceedings has gone. Uh, so shock, but also understanding from a lot of the lawyers. Yeah, the, uh, the Allen charge or, or the dynamite charge kind of loses effect when you give a bunch of them. You, know, you either give one and stick to it, or you just don't do it. And maybe this weekend of uh, sitting and stewing in, uh, in their deliberations, the jury will come back Monday with kind of a fresh perspective. Hey, uh, let me ask you this. Where's Mr. Weinstein been? Was he brought back into the courtroom for any of this? 
So he kind of moves in and out. He was there earlier this morning, Michael, but there's also a, a side room where he can go in and out. It's often where witnesses are being held. Now, we can't see what exact room he's in, but he is kept close to the courtroom. The lawyers, as well as Harvey Weinstein, are told they're not allowed to leave the court. So for the most part, he's kind of just sitting. I don't think he wants all the eyes on him at a time where he's very nervous because he could be going away for a very long time or for the rest of his life. So uh, he's kind of just off to the side for the most part. Yeah, I, I, I get that. That makes perfect sense. He's got to be there when needed, but you don't need to sit there and, and have all these you know, reporters just kind of staring you down. So let me ask you one more question here about the, about the jury. We know quite a bit about the mix now, uh, seven men, five women, et cetera. We know professional breakdown. Let me ask you what your sense is when you see them asking for more material, when you see them uh, telling the court, hey, we're hung on certain issues. Is there a sense of frustration that you see? Is it matter of fact? How are these jury members dealing with these things? All right, so you can kind of start to create camps for these jurors where uh, we're, and it's, again, it's all reading tea leaves, it's all speculation, but there's a belief that some are for uh, the prosecution and some are for the defense, and we're kind of just counting head nods and reading tea leaves to see if there's any been swaying or if people are nodding their heads in agreement uh, at certain points of the testimony, or when they come back and they say, hey, you have to continue to deliberate, receive any side glances. Now, I wasn't there specifically for when they came back and got the hour in charge. As you can imagine, there was a lot of running around back and forth to figure out what's going to happen next. Uh, but I can imagine that there would be some that be excited. Um maybe not excited is the right word, but uh, maybe happy to go back and deliberate. And some maybe a little bit frustrated they have to come back uh, next week. So it sounds like, let me give you your final thoughts on this here, Brian. It sounds like with where we are, with what we've heard from this jury, that Monday probably they're going to get it together and wrap up the last little bit of uh, questioning they may have, whether they're hung on counts or not. What do you think? Yeah, my bet would be a, a late Monday, maybe Monday afternoon-ish, we'd get a decision. I've, I've spoken to some of the defense counsel and, and, again, trying to read tea leaves as to what they anticipate, where they believe different jurors are uh, in this proceedings. And, again, a lot of us are thinking that next week, uh, whether it be Monday or early Tuesday, we'll get a verdict. Okay, very good, Brian. Thanks again for all the work out there. Obviously, you did a great job, you and Jesse Weber, bringing us all this detail from inside the courtroom because our cameras can't be there. So thanks again, Brian. Appreciate it.